two teams, one big blast. Everybody's invited to party in Everybody One to Switch. What you guys are currently watching is the announcement trailer for Everybody One Two Switch, the long awaited sequel to the Nintendo Switch tech demo One Two Switch. This sequel was met with mixed reviews, and it's also important to mention that Nintendo had a near 45 minute direct on the same day as this trailer, and I guess that tells you all you need to know about Nintendo's investment in this game. Mid! I guess they didn't want it to outshine Super Mario Bros. Wonder, am I right? But this video isn't about me hating on everybody 1-2 Switch, as it's been nearly a year and the internet has already done a lot of that for me. As I was scrolling through the comments, there were a few that stood out to me. Specifically, the comments about ARMS. ARMS. ARMS is a title I haven't heard in a while, seeing as though ARMS was also kind of a launching title for the Switch, as within the console's first couple of months there was kind of a drought of games. In fact, the Switch only had a handful of significant launching titles, including Super Bomberman R, 1-2 Switch, and the biggest one being Breath of the Wild, all releasing on March 3rd, 2017. The console wouldn't receive another big first-party game until April in the form of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which kept players occupied for a long time, as it'd be another month before Nintendo's next big release in June in the form of a brand new IP called ARMS, a 3D fighting game with a new unconventional fighting style. ARMS is exactly what the Switch needed early in its life cycle. Something new, something fresh, something different, and something that felt innovative. But just when I was prepared for Nintendo to fully support ARMS well into its life cycle, another game came and took the spotlight. I prayed for this and it happened. Now, I don't necessarily blame Splatoon 2 for the attention being taken away from ARMS. It's no secret that Splatoon has a bigger fan base than ARMS, and I also am no expert in advertising or marketing, but releasing the sequel to one of the best games of your last console a month after introducing this new IP seems kind of backwards and definitely did ARMS no favors. So it was kind of forgotten about. Not dying, but left on the back burner while we were busy enjoying Super Mario Odyssey and Splatoon 2. ARMS had always intrigued me as a game, but never enough to pull the trigger and buy it, especially considering its competition and not just the stuff on the Switch. Even now, I find myself in this rut where there is just so much to play. Some of my games get forgotten about or I end up playing and finishing years after getting them. What a trivial issue to have, right? Too many games. <laughs> but upon doing some research for this video, I found out that there is still an immense amount of support for this game by the fandom, which was unexpected. And with every year that passes, with every Direct that gets announced, they are practically begging for an ARMS 2. I even saw on the ARMS subreddit that the hope skyrocketed since 1-2 Switch got a sequel, and that must mean anything is possible. So, for this video, I played ARMS for the first time nearly 7 years later to see what all the hype was about. It's important to know that I'm not going in completely blind, as I've seen some of my favorite creators play it years ago, but every time I see footage of ARMS, it always looks the same, if that makes any sense. And like any game, I only judge it once I play it. I always just have a bunch of thoughts when I start a new game, so to help me better contextualize this video, I'll be breaking it up into sections, starting with the game's presentation. At the end of the day, ARMS is a fighting game, my favorite genre of game. So how the game is presented to me is a huge deal. Immediately from the title menu, I'm falling in love with this game, and that's probably just from the game's theme with these killer vocals. No seriously, listen to this. Now tell me that doesn't want to just make you throw your arms all willy nilly. It's also very colorful with his main theme being this neon yellow, the same color as his custom Joy-Cons, which were the Joy-Cons I've had before ever owning ARMS, so it felt right to properly use them for this game. The main menu is clean and straight to the point about all the game has to offer. Almost like when you boot up Street Fighter, just cut out all the fluff, you're either here to fight or fight. The character selection is also really good, with every single fighter feeling and playing differently from one another. Really enough for characters who don't speak, they display so much personality. Like if you're a first time player, it's easy to know simply by the character selection that even though mechanically the game may be the same, the character though what makes it different, and not just by the way they play, which I'll dive deeper into into another section, but by the way they look. 
I look at a character like Springman, who is the game's poster boy, who despite his arms being giant coils, looks like the most generic on the game's roster. And then I scroll over to Ninjara, and his arms are chains instead of coils, and his hair is in the shape of a ninja star. Or Helix, who isn't even a human, he's like a green humanoid blob with DNA strands for arms. And one of my personal favorites, Twintel, who has normal human arms, so the arm she fights with is her hair. She immediately became one of my favorites off of that alone. Arms also has a variety of fighting stages, with each of them coinciding with a particular character to give you an extra home field advantage. There's the scrapyard for a Mechanica, the snake park for a Kid Cobra, and the DNA lab for a Helix who I mentioned earlier. There's also something to be said about how quickly you jump into a mode. Like I said, there's no fluff, no alternate costumes, you just pick a fighter, pick a stage, and you're brawling. ARMS' core gameplay is incredibly engaging. I should say that I've mostly been playing with the Joy-Cons to play it how it was advertised and maximize the fun out of it. There were, and still are, so few games in the Switch's life cycle that convinced the player that it'd be more fun to play with just the Joy-Cons, so I'd be remiss if I didn't say ARM succeeds at this way past my expectations. I played with my Pro Controller for one thing, which I'll get into later, but it was the most uncomfortable switch going from Joy-Cons to controller. But anyway, ARM's core gameplay consists of punching, jumping, blocking, and dodging. That's pretty much the gist of it, and yet ARMS' gameplay feels as fleshed out and complex as a Tekken. I can't talk about ARMS without talking about the different types of ARMS. Now I genuinely think this video would be an hour longer than I'd like it to if I went over every single ARM of the game, so to put it simply, there are specific ARMS for specific characters. Some ARMS have ice, fire, and even poison effects, and some ARMS home in on the opponent like rockets. Some arms are good for countering opponents that constantly dodge, and others are used to prevent any rushdown from an opponent. And you have a choice between three at the start of every match and round. One for your left arm, and one for your right. Blocking protects you from your opponent's punches and is a great way to charge up your arms for a brief window of extra damage, but blocking doesn't protect you from getting grabbed. To grab, simply punch both arms at the same time for a nice damage rush of attacks. Dodging is the most effective way to dodge attacks. You can also dodge in every direction, on the ground or in the air. While fighting, items will sometimes spawn in on the stage, either being bombs that can be punched to stun or deal heavy damage on your opponent, or bottles that spray health to heal you, or a yellow bottle which increases the fill rate of your rush gauge. Oh, that's what I forgot. Your rush attack. Consider a rush attacks like a super move. There is a little triangle next to your character's name, and once that fills up, you can unleash a fury of attacks on your opponent by rapidly punching your arms. The fighters in arms also aren't just reskinned carbon copies of each other. They all come with their own secret ability that I don't think the game ever explicitly tells you about, but the more you play, the more apparent they become. Some I noticed on my own, where Ribbon Girl can jump multiple times while airborne, allowing for a greater defensive traversal movement, Ninjara can vanish after blocking an opponent's attack, allowing for an easy punish that is super annoying if you're on the receiving end, and a more obvious one is Bite and Bark. Bark isn't just an accessory, he also attacks your opponent, and you can use him to jump off of as well. ARMS also comes with a variety of game modes other than one-on-one -on -one fights. ARMS can be up to four players both locally and online. There's a team fight, which is a two-on-two -two fight, first to knock their team out wins. V-Ball, which I assume stood for Volleyball, but upon playing the mode I found that V stood for Very Explosive Ball, as this mode sees you and an opponent exchanging strikes with a ball, and if it lands on your side, it explodes. If it explodes on your side enough times, you lose. This mode can also be played with four people. Hoops is another game mode, and it's my favorite. It's probably my favorite of the ones I'm going to name here. You're playing basketball, except with your opponent. This mode is grab only, which sounds easy until you play it. I had a few close calls with the AI who would wait until I went for a punch, dodge, and grab me crazy style. Super fun mode, my only gripe is that it ends too quickly sometimes. There's a mode called skill shot, which just sees you destroying targets to get more points than your opponent. You can also attack your opponent, rendering them immobile for a short while while you rack up the points. Definitely my least favorite of all the modes, but can be super fun with another person, especially if you're really competitive. There's Headlock Scramble, and we'll get to who Headlock is in a second, but it's one-on-one -on -one, and the first person who's able to pick up the Headlock head gets their arms and attack power tripled, so it gets really intense. I played this mode a few times online against real people, and it gets real sweaty. 
There's also two additional modes separated from the ones I've mentioned previous for some reason. Those two are a 1 on 100 mode, which sees a character of your choosing take on 100 non-playable characters. They pretty much perish in one hit and their difficulty increases the higher your count goes and honestly, this is better than the practice mode because you're constantly moving and dodging and it just locks you into the action. The other one is called Arms Test. And it really isn't anything special. It's basically an endless mode, but every time a new fight starts, you get a new set of arms to choose from randomly. I mentioned me playing online earlier, and I'm happy to report that for a 7 year old game that hasn't received an update in a couple lunar cycles, it takes practically no time for me to join an online match. There's casual and ranked battles, and I don't know if I forgot about this, but while writing this script I found out that there were arms tournaments at one point, which is really cool. You can play all the modes I mentioned earlier online, but randomly. There's also a special online mode which sees you and random players using your combined might to attempt to beat Headlock. Even with three people trying to beat Headlock, it isn't that easy, but it adds to the variety which I'm all for. Also after every fight, you receive the game's in-game currency which you can redeem for artwork and unlock more arms for your characters. Every character starts off with three arms specifically for them, but there's a separate mode that allows you to unlock additional arms to use for those characters. For example, Springman's primary three arms are the Toaster, Boomerang, and Tribolt. But through this mode, I can unlock Min's Dragon for him to use. Racking up those points is easy through the game's Grand Prix mode. The Grand Prix mode is exactly what it sounds like. You go through 10 fights, and not just regular fights. The Grand Prix consists of all the game modes which make it more fun to play. You can also do Grand Prix with two people. Now, since I have no friends, I couldn't test it out, but it's cool that this game considered that two people could tackle this mode. But it makes sense with what I'm about to say in a bit. I beat the Grand Prix mode the first time with Springman and got all the way to the 10th fight and something felt... off. I beat Max Brass, the game's final fight, and I got a championship, and that's it. Completing a Grand Prix usually symbolizes the end, but nothing happened. No credits, no thank you message, nothing. That's weird, I thought, and very not Nintendo at all. And then I realized it was the difficulty. I totally ignored this the first time, I think, but there's seven levels of difficulty, and you only get the real ending if you complete it from a level four or higher. So I went in with Ribbon Girl this time, and got all the way to Max Brass, beat him, no problem, and then Headlock. I told you we'd come back to it. Came down from space and took over Max Brass without any consent. Like, and no one in this arena, not even the announcer, has any clue what's going on, and we have to fight him. And Headlock was the biggest challenge of this entire game to me. It genuinely took me like five solid tries to beat him, and every time I just grew more and more impatient and angry. And the only thing that didn't make me go insane was that every time I lost, I didn't have to start from the beginning. But when I finally delivered that KO shot to Headlock, the feeling of elation that left my body was out of this world. Yay! Headlock returned to space to have a meeting with HR probably, and I got those credits I was looking for the first time I beat the mode. And then it came, that funny feeling, that special feeling I only get once I beat a game. And that feeling became amplified when watching the credits. Those vocals made me forget about Headlock and what he put me through, and instead reminded me that ARMS is a gem that definitely deserves a sequel. It explains why Min Min was so well received in Smash Bros Ultimate, with a killer amiibo by the way. It makes sense why people were so passionate about playing this game competitively. And it makes sense why there's an immense amount of support for this game even now, and a huge outcry for this game to have a sequel. Because honestly, we didn't deserve this gem. And I'm grateful to have jumped on better late than never. And because of that, I want ARMS 2 NOW! Thank you guys so much for watching. This is post-edit Spuck to the Pluck here. Uh, this was one of my more fun videos to make. ARMS really has climbed its way up there. It's one of my favorite Switch games. I wish I had jumped on the fun 
uh, when it first came out. I played some of the free weekends when they had stuff like that, and also uh, the demo when that was available. But um, to actually own the game all these years later, me playing it was really, really cool. I even went out and tried to find the game physically because I'm, um, I prefer my games physically. I like having them in my hand, and I went out... And I, I found one in my local retro store, and it was like the European copy, so it had like a slightly altered cover, but to have it and to play it, um, sometimes I go into these videos um, and think of them as like a chore. Not all the time, it's, it's very rare that I feel that way, but um, I had high hopes for arms, and I'm glad those hopes were met, um, and it, it makes sense why there's uh, still support for this game, and don't stop what you guys are doing, because I know a lot of arms fans are probably going to see this video, and I uh, uh, hope you guys enjoyed and uh, leave a like if you enjoyed it. Comment down below what you think of arms in this video. I read all the comments. And I will talk to you guys in my next video. Peace.